Which Paladin's champions rate highest on the Phenometer? Who can be made to level 900 without burning out? Today, I answer these questions by breaking down the top five most fun champions in the realm in no particular order. This follows my top five most hated champions video, published a little while ago, which you can find in the cards above, and is the more positive, though just as lighthearted take on the champion roster. Disclaimer, this topic is very subjective, and your taste may very well be different to mine, so be sure to let me know your top five in the comments section below as we go along with this video. My idea of fun is often more towards lots of mobility and active abilities rather than the just COD run and gun experience. Though either is fine and I'll be breaking down in depth why I like each character shortly. I also did this video about three years ago when there wasn't even talent cards and the roster was much smaller and you can check that out in the description below for who kept on and who left the top spots. Before we begin, thank you to Amino for sponsoring this video. I mean, we've just launched a new stories feature with loads of cool content on video games, anime, and even paladins, and more. With the bonus of stories staying forever and not just disappearing like other places. Plus a chance to support content creators, like me, just by watching their content like on YouTube. I've also just released a story with five champions that are like five anime characters. And I just did it for fun and I think you should definitely check it out. Click the link in the description or in the pinned comment or search for Amino Apps to get the app. Once you have the app, you can go to the search icon, go for users, then search for Joshino. I'm pretty much the first one that comes up and has a little green tick next to it, plus, well, my face. Though I am Joshino underscores 38. Then you can come view my first story and also be sure to hit that follow button and bell icon so you get notified every time I put out a story. Without further ado, slithering to the fifth spot is our resident snack man, Maldamba. This may come as a surprise. A support? Being in the top spots? Does this man not know a VHS? You may very well think. Well, Maldamba actually does have a lot of tricks up his sleeve for fun times, and it isn't just in his infinite number of throwing snakes. The biggest reason why Maldamba has a lot of fun potential is that he has lots of ways to be played. Sure, you can take a back seat and make sure your allies are always healthy with the spirits chosen, the extra heal talent card. However, both of the other talent cards completely change the way Maldamba is played. Makono's Wrath makes you into a super snake tossing murder machine. With the increased toss speed, the snake still takes skill to land, but become massively more confirmable. Plus the extra damage makes you feel powerful when they land, especially when you toss them over the horizon line of some cover, and it arcs down, then hits an enemy without them being able to even see you. Plus you get that satisfying plunk sound to confirm the hit, and that you've left your foes in a whirling daze. The amount of control it gives you in fights up close does make you feel, in Grok's words, surging with power. That is, obviously, until the enemy picks up resilience and towards the end of the game you become a little bit pointless. Let's ignore that though, as in casuals, people can be rather derpy with their item choices. I'm not exactly going to advocate going into rank with this build. There are other little touches with the snake tossing, like the team player feeling you get as you stun an enemy for your team to laser down, or hitting far off stuns on a worm jet strogos to drop them into a death situation. Moving on to Wakono's Curse, it is one of the only dots in the game and is pinpoint accurate. Whilst again, I'm not going to tell anyone to go take this out in ranked, you can very much get a budget sniper feel from the weapon. Moving on from the main reasons I like Meldam, but he also has a fun set of abilities in his base kit. I've covered the snake toss and stunning, though on top of that, their main weapon's uniqueness being a smitting snake and the slower arcing projectiles fired mean there is some skill in using it too and potential to get better. Maldamba's escape slither also feels a treat to use, sliding across the map and potentially dodging insta-kill abilities like a dragon punch or a king bomb coming your way. It really has the clutch potential to win a point by surviving, but it also takes skill to time it correctly. On top of that, their gourd has interesting physics properties, with it initially bouncing off of walls and cover until it does hit their ground, meaning there are some trick shots to get them behind and around blind corners, plus the fact it's both offensive and defensive, dealing damage and healing at the same time. Finally, Maldamba's ult is probably the most hilarious to unfold. The animations of the feared enemies running away from the epicenter of your Dread Serpent Sphere are downright wacky. This ability too has a lot of control in that it is a projectile and you can detonate it mid-air. 
All in all, Maldamba has a lot of playstyles and legitimate card decks to match them and a very interesting base kit. Plus, he's been meta for the longest time and is my go-to main heal support. Rolling magisterially into fourth place is Bomb King. Where do I start here? This character is literally a big bomb that throws little bombs. I mean, that starts to sum up the ridiculous nature of the champion and as a setup for the theme of their gameplay. Let's start with their main weapon. Yes, these are Bomb King's loyal subjects that seem overly excited to be detonated for the whims of their master in battle. Let's put aside any ethical considerations or thoughts on how sentient the sticky bombs actually are. This weapon is, in my opinion, one of the most unique takes on the grenade launch type archetype of weapons merged with, I guess, the C4 explosive type weapons. You can either throw them and detonate them fast between the refire time at enemies close to you, throw and wait to confirm a stick to detonate far away, or lay six down in a mine trap if an enemy passes that could spell instant vaporization. This is probably one of the hardest to use weapons in the game, but also has the most amount of potential for very fine control too. The strategy side can come into play with how you use them. You need to consider whether the enemy might be healed whilst you're fighting them. So do you wait to try and get two sticky bombs on them before detonating to get a bigger burst and kill them before they're healed? Or do you just spam the bombs as fast as you can to get damage in an area if there's a group of enemies? Plus it also does take quite a bit of practice and muscle memory to get the detonations right. It is very hard to stick to enemies that are further away than a few meters, but with practice and timing, you can detonate as close as possible to still do the big damage without actually physically sticking the sticky bomb to them. Also, those plonk sounds when you actually get them to an enemy with your sticky bombs has to be one of the most satisfying things of all time. Not only is their main fire unique and built with a high skill ceiling, but Poppy Bomb, their escape is just as wacky and interesting. Again, throwing out one of your subjects to detonate, but now with the property of knocking you and your enemies backwards. Perfection. It isn't quite as powerful as the OG knockback if you were there in the earlier beta. He could practically fire across the map. Then it was nerfed, and then you could ride the air by detonating sticky bombs under you, but that too was nerfed, sadly. Whilst probably necessary for balance, they were damn fun. Though Bomb King still is one of the most maneuverable champions in the game, with more vertical mobility than a lot of the flank champions. He can get to ledges, often by wall and poppy jump comboing, that only the top tier mobility flanks like Eevee, Andra and Maeve can jump to. My favourite thing to still do now is throw it in front of me in the face of an enemy detonate, knocking both me and the enemy back as I throw no damage drop off sticky bombs into their saddened faces. There's also the element of the Jolt card for Bomb King which significantly increases the knockback to enemies whilst making the poppy bomb explode as soon as it hits something. It almost plays like a talent card in of itself with how on certain maps like Frog Isle and Fish Market you can use it to troll enemies by throwing them into the air to be dunked into the deadly water. I do, however, think it isn't that great as it is countered hard by resilience, so it's only fun for the early game. It is slightly harder to do, but you can achieve this with the base Poppy Bomb 2 without actually getting the jolt. The rest of Bomb King's kit is interesting too. Grumpy Bomb is an explosive with a fuse time that literally explodes with anger, stunning enemies. This too is unique in the fact that it is almost like a basketball full of pebbles. You have to try and throw it over walls and in gaps, but it has loads of gravity pulling it down. It can also be bounced off of obstacles and can have some skill in its placement. Plus, Bomb King's King Bomb, where you decide it's time for you to explode as you go full Sonic ball rolling at your enemies. This too has quite a high skill ceiling because it takes experience to know when to use it, you're extremely slow and you can hardly turn. Plus, it is best when used with a poppy bomb to propel yourself further and make you harder to burst yourself down. Plus the fact it can pretty much insta-kill most champions if you touch them, or highly damage and stun from mop-up if not. And I do admit, there is a lot of funny moments where you fall off an edge or get stuck in a corner because it is so hard to control. But that too is part of the fun of this ultimate. Finally, the rest of the talent cards aren't all that impactful on the playstyle of the Bomb King. Chain reaction may make you more of a troll mining doors and things, but it's not a huge spin on the other talent cards really. But yes, Bomb King is great. If you've been put off by the hard mechanics, they are definitely worth the practice. By just being as ancient as he is, the original Grandpa Turtle, Makoa, spins into the third spot. Do you challenge Makoa? This is where things are definitely subjective in my list as there are just small things that make Makoa fun in his design for me rather than any over the top mechanics. 
But I will also say that part of the reason why I always enjoy Makoa is probably because I play a lot of ranked and it is always banned. So being base, quite a fun champion, always being fresh when I go to casuals probably makes him seem more appealing. What does everybody else think? Or are you just sticking to casuals? So first up, let's talk about our ancient boy's escape. On paper, shell spin isn't that incredible. Though some base instinct inside of me loves both the way that you spin in your shell, the fact that you can hit enemies out of the way, and ultimately satisfying thunk when you connect with an enemy. I don't know what exactly it is, though probably it's nostalgia from jumping on top of a Cooper in Mario 64 than riding his shell, exploding enemies into a poof of smoke as you plowed through them. It isn't even that good in terms of doing any damage, it's just that it really is interesting. Though I will say, another part of Makoa's kit that is a unique spin on the shield mechanic is that you're almost a mobile deployed spherical shield with shell shield. The fact that you walk on all fours too is pretty unique and quirky and kind of fun to use in the way it looks. There's a lot of skill in moving to keep the sphere over your allies and between enemies. On top of that, it feels extremely satisfying to use a shell spin whilst in the shield to get the shield to where it needs to be or to escape essentially invulnerable. I haven't even really come to the main feature of the Makoa, which gets him banned every time, and that is the anchor or hook. This is always one of the more fun mechanics in games from Pudge in Dota to Roadhog in Overwatch, grabbing an enemy out of their comfort zone and dragging them into your allies is always going to be satisfying. On top of that, it is incredibly fun to stand the edge of maps and slam dunk enemies into the abyss or the big drink. An even funnier mechanic is grabbing an enemy after you've been knocked off the edge of the map, say with the Cassie's disengaged, to ensure mutually assured destruction. Another mechanic of Makoa's that is fun to use is his cannon, which deals some hefty single shot damage, doesn't have too much drop off, and has a lot of room for skilled shots. There's almost a dunking feeling when using the cannon too at range, as it has quite a high drop, though it is possible to compensate for it and to hit it consistently. It's extremely satisfying to jump around and hit a Drogos miles away in the air whilst they're using their worm jets, or to fire over the curve of horizon slightly. I would say the way the cannon fires visually and the audio sound has the most punch in the game and is one of the most satisfying weapons. The other fun elements are the shift to a melee character when you ultimate with Ancient Rage. It does feel good to mechanically fail that anchor into groups of enemies as they try to repeat retreat from your juggernaut mode, especially to drag someone back as they try to run away from with your hook. His talents aren't the most interesting in the game, though I do like half shell and dancing in and out around the shell as enemies try to chase you between the walls. It really can feel like you're going for the full bamboozle and that is fun. Blinking into second is Eevee. I think for a long time Eevee has been seen as the epitome of skill to players, and players that play here are often quite revered. She is admittedly extremely hard to play on console though, and hard to quite get the same flow you do with the mouse and keyboard. Honestly though, the blink build Eevee can almost be like playing an instrument. You have to manage your abilities well, timing is everything, and as a champion that could potentially die to one shot, especially if you aren't full health when you blink, there's a huge risk and reward factor. I always feel like I'm dancing on a knife's edge when playing her. So this is the start at the wormhole talent card, where you can blink twice. First to your desired location, then back to where you started with a limit of four seconds. That timer too adds another element of suspense as you play with there being an added element they have to keep in the back of your mind if you want to survive. Not only this, but you need to make sure with your blinks where you're actually going. Do you go into a blind spot and cover above you, or is there someone waiting for you there to stun and grab you? Do you go into the air and try and drop behind enemies whilst firing, or do you just need to get the hell out of there and any blink will do? There's just so many options for an Eevee. Plus you can pretty much get to any point on any map with a blink, with a little help from some cards and some distance. On top of the blink, the Saw ability, which quirky on its own right, being that you ride your broom staff like a witch through the air, gives you that other level of control to move around the map. Plus adds either a safety net if your blinks are on cooldown, or an extra chase potential to go barreling after a wounded enemy and secure a kill. On top of that, you can fire to disable your saw, and there's a skill in timing this right, especially for things like chasing a worm jet's drogos in the air and securing hits on them. So this has another element of skill that gives more potential to be played well with some learning. On the topic of the saw, the legendary card Over the Moon is also interesting paired with a deck that can 100% reset saw once you kill an enemy. With this legendary card, 
and you're doing well. You can go from kill to kill, barreling through the air like a rabid flying squirrel, and it is super satisfying if you get the chance to pull it off. Another element to Eevee's kit is the main fire. It is, again, a slow moving projectile, which means there is a lot of room to learn the speed of the shot and train that muscle memory so you can even hit mobile flankers darting through the air. Her ice block 2 has a timing element. It can be used to quickly perhaps block one big shot and throw enemies off, or to wait, heal, and be ready to jump or fly away with one of your escapes. Finally, her ult is quite fun to play in the talent card Snow Globe, where you can essentially hold two more powerful ults at full charge, or an early and often ult as you can use it at 50%. It generally can be fun to get people stuck into your snow sneeze. All in all, it takes a lot of practice and concentration to play Eevee, though she has so much potential to play well in a satisfying way. Pouncing into the number one spot is Maeve, who I think has collectively been one of the most popular champions in the game up until this point. Maybe I will nudge her out the way a little bit with a conquest of cuteness. Anyway, popularity contests aside, Maeve is crazy fun to play. What you may ask, well, she has a lot of qualities that the Eevee has in terms of ability, timing, and skill scene potential, however not quite to such a hyper extent as her, though in some ways being slightly more laid back may mean you could potentially enjoy her a little more. So first up, she has two escape abilities. Three if the count the fact that she can double jump normally, which occasionally can get you to ledges some champions can't get to without running around a long walkway. Five if you can count the fact that you can reset the first two with your nine lives ability. Though I'll come back to that in a little bit. One of the things I love with Maeve is how controlled you can be with your movement abilities and how much more powerful they can be with wall jumps to go higher. This is especially true with the prowl ability which makes you faster and allows you to jump higher. With some map knowledge and using walls you can make jumps just with one prowl and double jump without wasting a pounce. For example, you can prowl and double jump the bushes, the enemy side, on Stone Keep, where there's normally a wall, by using those walls to jump up and riding the walls a little bit. You can also ride the walls to get to the top of the turrets too, where you might not normally be able to. Whilst you aren't actually riding the walls physically, some of the jumps and combos can feel a bit like you're playing a faster Lucio from Overwatch. The Pounce 2 feels great to use as you jump miles in the direction you want to go. It also sounds good. It really does feel like you're tearing through the air. I generally also think the Thud and Knock Bounce Back if you hit an enemy is also rewarding, although I don't necessarily play her as much with an aggressive Pounce, so much as a repositioning or escape Pounce. It is always satisfying to rip through the air and to try and drop daggers onto unsuspecting enemies, or to barrel through a small gap and into the safety of cover. Though where skill comes into play is the addition of 9 lives coming into the mix. Being good at Maeve is often managing your abilities to make sure you're getting the most value out of your movement, but also saving escape to get out of there, usually a lone pounce. It can feel a bit like playing a rhythm game, Maeve's very own Guitar Hero or Osu plays. Those plays on Maeve are also kind of one of the coolest ideas for a main weapon. It just always feels epic to be a knife thrower. Though these daggers are also fun in their own mechanical right, being that one shot is basically split into two shots that can converge or can be shot in two places if you move at the last split second. There is also some drop mechanics with the daggers and travel time, so it again has some added skill in getting that aim muscle memory. I wouldn't say that Maeve's ultimate is all that fun, especially next patch when it is countered by the resilience, though visually it is quite cool. Although, almost better to be on the receiving end of it, in that sort of thick fog. One element in her talent cards is Rogue Gambit, which is fun, which will allow you to reset your pounce on eliminations. More so than an Eevee Saw build, which requires the kill, it's much easier to get an assist with that elimination to then jump on toward another enemy again. It can, like the Eevee Saw build, be very satisfying to string kills and take advantage of the higher damage on the pounce. I do think Street Justice is slightly anti-fun. The XQ talents and my eyes have always been a bit lazy, though it can be kind of viable into the ranked two tank meta. Though Cat Burglar is my jam, paired with some prowl speed in your cards, and you can use the ability economy well to be mobile, do extra damage, and then juggle that with your pounce cooldowns for a final getaway. So that's it, my personal top 5 most fun champions to play in Paladins. Again, be sure to let me know your top 5 in the comments section below. Do you agree or disagree with my opinions? How is it for console gamers versus, say, us PC players? If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more of my content, and check out all of my social media. I'll see you all next time, folks. Thanks for watching. Joshino, over and out.